Welcome to Corporate Governance at LSE. My name is Tom Kirchmeier and I have with me here Carsten Gerner-Borle. Welcome back because we had actually a contribution Thank from you. you a while ago. Um, I have to declare an interest because I, we will talk about a paper which we co-authored together. It's on say on pay, Carsten. What did we do? Well, the starting point for the paper was a recent reform in the UK in 2013 that restructured the disclosure regime on, uh, on uh, executive pay and also introduced a binding shareholder vote on what the government called the remuneration policy. But that was only in the UK? No? That, that was only in the UK. So the paper focuses on the regulatory environment in the UK and we have a sample of 100 companies, in fact the constituent companies of the FTSE 100. So the focus is on the UK but the question arguably is more general. It is whether shareholders make use of the wealth of information that is now provided to them under various disclosure regimes internationally, not only in the UK, and whether their vote is informed by this information. So we call this paper, say, on pay, do shareholders care? Hmm. Which is obviously the big question because this is why we, we put up this regulation in the yeah. first place. So yeah. do shareholders care? Well, uh, maybe, maybe I should say a little yeah. bit more about the regulatory regime in the UK in order to kind of set the stage. So initially, since 2002, there was an advisory vote on the remuneration report by shareholders. And the government felt that this uh, advisory vote was not working sufficiently well and did not result in a, in a constraint on remuneration decisions and remuneration packages. So the more recent reforms extended the disclosure requirements and now companies have to produce a, a so-called annual report on remuneration which sets out as before the actual pay package that the CEO and other executives received in the past financial year. And in addition, and that's the regulatory innovation here, companies have to produce a remuneration policy report which explains the structure of the pay package, forward-looking. And the shareholders now still have this advisory vote on the annual report and also a binding vote which they have the right to exercise at least every three years on the policy report. So both parts of the remuneration report set out distinct pieces of information. And now our idea was that if shareholders take the difference in the information that is provided to them into the account, then we should be able to see a difference also in their voting behavior, focusing on the advisory vote on the one hand and the binding vote on the other hand. Now, Coming back to my question, do shareholders care? <laughs> do they actually use all the information that is provided to them now? Yes, so our findings indicate that they care especially about one thing, and that is the top line remuneration figure. We tried to quantify, obviously, not only the actual remuneration information in the report, but also the more narrative information meaning the, the information that describes the structure of the pay package. For example, what is the vesting period for performance-based components for long-term incentives? What is the retention percentage? What are the, the arrangements in order to avoid reward for failure? So Marlowe's clawback provisions, etc. We codified all of that and we found that what seems to be the driver of higher or lower approval rates in the general meeting is solely the top line remuneration figure. So as such it looks like regulation failed because we impose all these costs on firms to disclose all these figures and shareholders don't use it. The most important piece of information is the so-called single total figure table. That's one table in the remuneration report that sets out what the CEO and the other executives received in the past financial year. So this is the table firms should publish and we sh should forget about the rest. 
if you want to put it provocatively, <laughs> that might be the conclusion, yes. yes. So what's really interesting about the UK case is that you have these two votes, one backward looking yeah. uh, and one in the policy, in the policy report forward looking. Yeah. How often does it really happen that you get different votes? The, the votes usually only differ marginally. So we computed a certain interval around the, the difference in order to, to measure when the vote on the annual report and the vote on the policy report differ significantly. Mm. I and think we found 23%. We, we found that they, they differ significantly in 23% of, of the cases and then we we wanted to find out what drives a significantly higher or lower approval rate on the, let's say, policy report rather than the annual remuneration report. And maybe you can say a little bit about well, so our findings you know, What there. was interesting in this respect is if um, the people voted overwhelmingly in favor of the policy report, it looked like these were companies which had very good prospects in the future, like very high Tobin Q, as we call it. Yeah. Um, so really rewarding firms where, where shareholders thought this will be a big winner. So, and so again, our findings indicate there's one fairly easily appreciable piece of information that shareholders take on board in making their voting decision, and that is the forward-looking profitability of the company, whereas all the other variables that we had in our equations that measured the more narrative content of the policy reports or the structure of the executive pay package were insignificant. So Carsten, what's the big policy conclusion here? Well, I guess you could say that the main policy lesson from this is that policymakers should be careful to strike the right balance between on the one hand, ensuring that investors are provided with a, with a sufficiently detailed amount of information, and on the other hand, the regulatory burden that this imposes on companies. In order to strike that right balance, I think it's important to make sure that the information that is provided to investors is actually used by them. Very nice closing statement. Thank you very much, Carsten, for coming in. Thank you for the invitation. And many thanks for watching. Thank you.